I wanted to share with you my latest sketchbook. I have, I shouldn't say sketchbook, I should say art journal. I haven't actually looked in here for actually maybe a month. So I would like to share with you, um, this is all now completed and it's pretty special to me. I'm gonna be focusing on art journalings for the next few months here on YouTube. And so I thought what a better, what a great way to introduce everybody to art journaling if you're not familiar with it is um, to share with you mine. So this is a Strathmore watercolor paper journal. It's filled with really heavy um, 140 pound cold press paper which means that it's very um, textured and it can hold a lot of water so it's really really good for literally anything <laughs> it can handle this is a full-on acrylic mixed media um, painting and it can handle anything that you can throw at it and so that's why it's my favorite journal for sure uh, and stay to the end of the video because you'll actually I'm, after I show you all these pages you actually get to see um, the first project in my next Strathmore uh, journal so that's kind of exciting an intimate little peek of the next one this one I did I got some Arteza products and I was experimenting with them I remember specifically on the day that I did this I was Oh, like really really crazy stressed out and I can't remember now what the cause of it was but this is like the reason <laughs> this like emotional vomiting on a page but making beautiful art is like the reason that art is so special to me and especially specifically working in my art journals because you know if they're private and I don't want anyone to see them I all I have to do is close my book um, but it's also something I just believe strongly in having like leaving a legacy for my children and being able to like say, pass this on to my grandchildren someday and just like give them a window into like the weird crazy person that I am without having to read any boring diary you know entries or whatever so to me this is like a very like a much more intimate look at to kind of what's inside um, and that being said, um, you know, it's a great place to express yourself in terms of like trying new products and just being free and like being weird and not having to worry about anything but me. Um, all of these are projects for some reason, but this one was really a personal project for me. There is a time-lapse version um, available that you can watch on YouTube. I'll link to that in the eye in the corner of your screen. Um, Watercolor paper is actually all, all is really good for um, graphite drawing as well because it has such a big tooth. Um, when you're shading with soft pencil, it just works really, really well and it creates a lot of interest. Um, this guy right here, these are both lessons that I did for my students in the Fun Fab Drawing Club at Awesome Art School. Um, you'll be hearing more about that soon because I only open registration for that twice a year on Easter and on Halloween, so that's coming up. But this guy was actually on a t-shirt. When I was in Iceland, I saw him on a t-shirt and I just thought he was so rad, so cool, that I took his picture and I came home and I drew it and it's actually part of a full length lesson, but I just, oh my God, I, I like still like can't get over how much I love this guy. And then I had to make him a girlfriend. This was like this gaping, like empty page next to him. So I used this with a combination of um, a reference photo and I think it was a photograph and also some other artwork and I kind of combined them together to make my own version. But I just love graphite with, on cold press. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see how like bumpy and lumpy it is. But you can just get so much texture. Um, sometimes I'm really into that and sometimes I'm not. Um, but it's, you know, when it goes in that direction, I just really like it. And I like that you can kind of combine the soft shading with some cross hatching. And I just, I think this dude will forever be one of my favorite, my favorites. I wish I knew the name of the artist who done the original. It, his looks different. It's a little, he's got like a narrower face, but I'm very proud of these graphite drawings. I will, I, I forgot they were in here. So I'm excited I get to like rediscover what the innards of my art journal with you. And before I forget, let me know in the comments section too um, if you are a big art journaling fan. And if you are, also what, what's your favorite art journal to use? I would love to know what other people are doing too. This is 
Oh, I forgot about this one too. So this was a lesson I did for my mixed media society. That's another one of my memberships that I have. I have just, I have the two. I have a drawing one and a mixed media one. And this is all made with washi tape. So, and so are the flowers and so are the dragonflies. It's, um, yeah, it's washi tape. I totally forgot about her. With some watercolor and inks. Yeah, and lots of Sharpie. This is just like a happy spread. This makes me so happy. This was based on, I'm actually gonna grab that. Just gonna say, I'm like, this is my, this was my first washi tape girl. This one is on YouTube. And I, again, check the eye in the corner. I'll link this to, to, for you so you can watch it. Um, but this is also just washi tape on watercolor paper. And again, just using watercolors. So it's like true mixed media because you have a little bit of everything kind of going on. Um, let's see what's on the next page. Oh, I love this girl. Oh, this is, okay, yay. I totally forgot all this was in here. This was uh, me getting ready for the first um, Scottish castle art retreat that I run with um, Lucy Bryden and Jenny Mano. And I was doing studies because I had all these ideas and this is, and the ideas, original ideas I did have is what I ended up teaching when I was in Scotland, but I had ideas, I had um, collected all these um, like Scottish magical uh, botanicals and trees and flowers and I had like made this whole like booklet up of those. And then um, I wanted to combine like crystals. It was this very elaborate thing. So this was like my first, um, we could only bring watercolors because obviously people are traveling from around the world. So we couldn't bog down everybody with like crazy art supplies. So we were limited to watercolors. Um, and I was just, uh, this, I was just playing around, but like to, th to this day, this just will live in my heart, this particular project because um, it was all of my ideas like synthesized like the way that I wanted to kind of like out the gate and I was just so excited and I was so excited for because there's meaning behind all the crystals and there's all these like folklore cool magical significances behind all the botanicals and like putting them all together and making these magical fairies just goes along with all the magic of Scotland and why I'm obsessed and why I can't wait to go back in June this year, do it all over again. Um, this was the same thing. I was, I, I was like, I just, I was obsessed with, um, I watched like 152,000 YouTube videos on how to paint crystals. Like I could not get enough. So I was just trying different color combinations out and the sparkles, um, again, combining with the botanicals. I didn't record her. I It had been maybe like years, I wanna say, that I had, since I had just made something for me that wasn't recorded. And so she's very special to me because it was like, when I, when I do make things that are not on tape, I, that's like even more deeply personal. So um, that means I wasn't thinking about anything except what I'm putting down on paper. And I do think that that, um, has a good positive effect on what you can create and I need to do that more and so I've kind of pledged to myself to make sure I turn my camera off a little bit uh, a little bit more often to see what comes out so I love her for that same reason I loved her so much I did put she even has purple eyes like come on I did put her in, um, she's in the How to Draw and Find Your Style book, just a black and white. I just had to pop her in there because I loved her so much. This is just like doing botanical studies based on um, all, I kind of like poured over these Scottish like fairy lore books and pulled out all of the species of plants that have like some connection to fairies or um, just like the underworlds, so the elder and Hawthorne. And I just did, um, these are really just my studies on how to make them. I came up with this method of like using painter's tape to carve out these cool designs. And then I would stamp, I would stamp the backgrounds of them and then just do a little doodle. And then I would do a, some gel pen on top. But these are just significant because it's just me getting like emotionally prepared for the trip about what I'm gonna teach, what I'm doing. Um, and I do think it was very successful when we got there. I mean, I 
just, I don't think I could have had a better time, honestly. This was actually a demo of a thistle that I did while I was teaching in Scotland. This was actually on my teaching day. Um, so I just did a, a demo while we were there. So there that is. Oh gosh, this is like, this is why journals are so powerful. I mean, you're holding like a whole book of canvases basically. And every page has like a story and a background and like conjures, brings back memories. And it's like, just, if you haven't ever done an art journal, I hope that you'll join me. I'm gonna do a, a challenge coming up here on YouTube um, just to get everybody kind of in the groove and started. And I encourage you to, to get one. It doesn't have to be this one, but just start one maybe with us and it'll be really fun to have a lot of people play along. Um, this one was a really, really ugly page. It was a demo page that I had done in Scotland. It was horrific. So I took this, I bought this vintage book when I was there at an old bookstore, like hundreds of years old. And I was doing a demo on basically what, like how to cover up a, an ugly page, just like an easy background. I've done a couple like that on YouTube. Oh, I wanna go around like right now with my ink stamp and like stamp the corners. So this is just Stabilo Wall. This is like one of my favorite techniques, just light gesso, Stabilo Wall and water and like that's it. And you can just do, you can make magic in just a few strokes. So she is very special to me. I have a YouTube video on that also. I'll also, I think I get five of those eyes per video. So I'll put it, put an eye right there. You can click on that if you want to see this project. Uh, hopefully I won't have more than two more. This is, um, oh God, uh, I love this girl so much. This was the day that Jenny Mano taught in Scotland. And she, um, I loved what she did. She um, had like, Oh, like a mess, like a, we had a dining table at, in the castle that sat 16. And so it was long, it was probably hundreds of years old. And, and she had filled it with reference photos of just beautiful girls in different poses and nature and like just quirky characters. Again, all just reference photos. And so she had each of us take two um, and then she demoed her watercolor techniques um, for how to draw a girl. So this was um, the two reference photos I wish I had um, combined. And of course I had my little crystal, that's because that's what I did. So I just got completely swept away during this lesson. I think all of us did, especially for me because I tend to get really lazy with my backgrounds. and because I was using the two reference photos and mashing them together. Jenny is really good at the mashups and using those as prompts. And I need to remember that. We've done a few together on YouTube as well. Um, it's just a great way to like be creative and like think of new ideas. I never would have had this cool like winding like the branches and then the other branches and then this like had I not had those reference photos and she encouraged us to blend those together. So and then I brought with it these watercolor techniques that I was really developing and playing with that I was teaching my own lesson based on these girls that I had done before I went. So this was like, this will always be my like probably top favorite page. It like makes me weep. It's just, it's like the joy of being there. It's the joy of learning new techniques. It's like the beauty of the reference photo. It's like so much just together. Oh, our journaling has like changed my life. And then this was, this is just more of the, those botanical studies on a different scale. Um, this one was a full length lesson I had done with my um, mixed media society members. For This was our November lesson. Um, my, my website is Awesome Art School is the name of my, my online art school that, I, that I'm the founder of. And I'm very proud of these, just these lessons and the people that choose to, to go deeper with me every month and every week and just have like a really big passion for, for just creating art that is meaningful, not only just because of the end result, but just because of sort of just the joy of it. I don't think there's people that take classes with me that are like, you know, interested in like being in galleries and like making a million dollars. It's like the people that are, that do art with me at Awesome Art School are like people who do art for the same reasons that I do art, which is like, it just makes them feel damn good. You know, it's just like such a positive, amazing um, thing to be inside of. What is this? <laughs> 
So, um, all right. I didn't even, I totally forgot that that was in there. That's funny. This was an ugly page that I had black gessoed over and then I was just doodling around with white paint pen. So I, I like wanna work on her right now. <laughs> she feels very unfinished to me, so I need to get on that. Um, this is just me and El, my elegant writer and water. This is, oh, I will put another eye in the corner up there. Um, I do have a full length tutorial on this on YouTube and she also makes an appearance in my how to draw and find your style book as well. Just because it's, it links to a, like a full face drawing tutorial and obviously I, if you couldn't tell already, I really have a thing with drawing faces, but, um, yeah, I actually did this because I had promised in Scotland to do a demo of how you can use the Elegant Writer for faces, and I, we just ran out of time. We were, we were so, so busy there, and I felt really bad, so I actually made this for my Scotland girls, but um, YouTube gets the benefit <laughs> of that lesson, as do um, everyone who bought my How to Draw and Find Your Style book gets that lesson as well, but it's right on YouTube. I'll link to that. Um, this was actually my, this was the full length lesson and demo that I did while I was in Scotland. So I did this like, like a standing up in front of everyone and like, you know, watercoloring kind of like standing, holding this up, you know, like on my stomach and like demoing, trying to paint upside down. So the, it's, it's not as, um, cohesive as some of these other pieces because I was standing up the whole time while I was painting and demoing all at once. So it was like, a, it's a little bit of a mess, but I still love it. It has the, the botanicals, the crystal, the girl, the eye shine, like all the pieces are there. So I can't, I can't help but just be super happy when I see her. Purple eyes, yes. Oh yes, and then <laughs> I forgot about her too. So I took all of those same elements and I had come back and I wanted to give um, my students that are at Awesome Art School, just the same like real time, in depth, juicy lesson that I was giving my Scotland in person people. So I did a whole nother lesson and that was this girl. And we talked about um, just using, um, like using the color wheel to purposefully pick colors that are opposite one another because it like magnifies their effects. So that was one thing that I, made a point to do here um, with the green and the red are opposites on the color wheel so it gives it like that extra punch and then same with this one blue and orange are opposites on the color wheel so that pick packs a big punch and this is the other opposites are uh, purple and yellow so again they they pack a big punch and so you know I like to combine just more than one thing into lessons so people are getting a lot out of yeah out of, a lot out of those memberships just think of it as like Netflix but like for art nerds um, oh yay this was another full-length tutorial I did for my mixed media society members this is like very classic this is my uh, hamburger system. Okay, that'll be the last I put in the corner <laughs> up there. It's the last one. I think that's all five I just used. This is like classic Karen. Like this is how I do all my mixed media projects. Like classic mixed media projects. Like with a collage base and then gesso, acrylic, seal. Um, no, sorry. Um, art crayons and then seal and then pit pens and then seal and then blah 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 so if you want to learn all about my entire system I have a whole playlist of uh, seven videos about the hamburger mixed media hamburger system that I just published um, a book actually based on that whole series it's actually sitting here so that's the, that whole series on YouTube became became a book um, because th in doing that series I like just did so much, I did so much research and background and and supply testing and I made all these cheat sheets for everybody and you can still get the hamburger cheat sheet to this day and then I just did like full on, it was like a full on course over that spanned over seven or eight videos and so I just made a whole book. I was like, well, I gotta just get this down on, I have a book publishing issue problem anyways, I can't stop. So anyways, this is, this is my girl made with the hamburger system, so you can learn all about that there. Oh, she was just on, she was just on YouTube. She was my, I think I just released her, 
I, I had done her in the fall, but I released this as a lesson here on YouTube. Oh, I ran out of eyes. I'm so sorry. I will link to all these full length lessons in the description box. How is that? But she's on YouTube also. And um, I recently got into Noodlers Inc., which are these like ridiculously lush, lush, um, they're actually fountain pen inks. And I like cannot get enough. They're so luscious. I'm obsessed. So I did this full length tutorial on YouTube to, to introduce people to that because I'm really like can't even love it enough. Um, and that's just ink and graphite. Easy peasy. This is all Stabilo All pencil. That's it. And water. And this was a full length lesson I had done for my Fun Fab Drawing Club members, I think in maybe October. Or November but I wanted to show you what you can do with a single pencil she's in the how to draw book as well um, and I have a short video version on YouTube but my um, drawing club members are the ones that got the full-length one and then this was just noodlers ink play I had gotten just purple when I was in Vancouver Canada I picked up the purple and I had never used it before and this was just I was just messing around and I almost died because have you ever seen something so beautiful in your whole life like the purple oh this was my introduction to noodlers ink and then I went on um, I bought two other colors yeah, because I think I had three for a while. And then I went on like a Facebook live, a uh, YouTube live and just like messed around and doodled those other girls while I was like chattering. That's why they look a little wonky. And this one, I was alone. So she's a little bit more serious. Um, but Noodler's Inc. is no joke. I, I am obsessed. And I've since expanded my collection to I think maybe like 12 colors. Um, speaking of the hamburger series, my very first mixed media hamburger series demo, I did this girl like fully. So I have the first video in that hamburger. So the first, um, the first video in the hamburger series is me doing this whole thing and talking through all of the steps of the hamburger system. And then I'm trying to show you where that, oh, here's like the full, like all the steps of the hamburger. So you can see me make her in that first video. And then I break the each layer out into its own video as well. But that's what I did for that demo. Um, and then this, oh, I forgot. This is when I only had three Noodlers Ink colors. And this was a challenge for Jenny Mano on her Facebook group had like, uh, oh, it was like Mermaid Crossless Queen. I thought it was like her Inktober like version. She had prompts for her Facebook group. So that's what that double spread is. Oh yeah, this is my last one, see? My grandmother passed away on Thanksgiving and she was 103 years old, which is just mind blowing. But when I was a little girl, I, she, we, or our family owned a farm in Pennsylvania and I spent my summers at this farm in Pennsylvania. And um, my grandmother introduced me to a artist that was local to like Amish Dutch country in the middle of Pennsylvania. Her name is P. Buckley Moss and she is a watercolorist and she makes these gorgeous horses. And so this, when she died, um, I was obviously super sad and I went into my studio and I created this based on P. Buckley Moss in honor of my grandmother and I'm using the some more inks in this one, but this is like my dedication to her seat and I forgot about this. So that's why these are so personal. Um, it's also the reason that I don't like sell my work I'd much because it's just so personal to me and I have a really hard time parting with it. So um, I'd rather just do it all in journals. So I'm gonna be having um, a journal challenge coming up. We're gonna talk, we're gonna make a cover for this one, I'm gonna show you um, some of my other favorite art journals that I like to work in and why I like them. Um, so again, in the comment section, like let me know what you like using now because I really would like to see what those are and also I wanna see if there's any that I don't know about. And so let me know not only what you're using but why you like it because that's super important. Um, and then, yeah, stay tuned. I'm gonna do about four weeks of February. I'm gonna do all on art journaling. So we're gonna do one on backgrounds. We're gonna do one on covers. We're gonna do one on types. I forget the last one. And then um, in March, I'm gonna start like a face drawing challenge. And we're gonna do a ton of work on shading because I know that's something that 
so many people struggle with, so I wanna go do a deep dive into shading to help everybody out with that. So stay tuned, I'm gonna have a little um, cheat sheet that you guys can grab. We're all gonna have the same like face base and then we're gonna tweak something on it every week. So I have a whole thing planned up for February and March. So I hope you'll see. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out any of that for any of that fun. Um, you can check the description box for all of like information on the projects that I haven't been able to fit in the, on the cards on the YouTube screen. And if you stay for just one more minute, I'll give you a sneak peek into um, my new Strathmore art journal that I just started. Um, and just you can see that. I'll just do a quickie time lapse so you can get a sneak peek of that. And thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.
show. 